Welcome back, little monkey fans. Today we're going to swing on over to our creative branch to show you our custom haunted house. We'll show you how we spookified our Playmobil Victorian mansion and took it from this to this. Well, let's get started. And here is the exterior of our spookified Playmobil Victorian mansion. The first thing that we did was to paint the exterior. We added two coats. The first was a gray primer and then we added a stone textured paint over top and it kind of gives it this rough textured feel. Next, we painted all of the window trim and the overhang over the front door a flat gray. And then we changed the rooftop color to a flat black. We decided to paint the upper window frames as they used to be a dark brown. And then we also refreshed the courtyard screen to a crisp white. Next, we painted our flowers black and gray and then added back in some of the original white flower tops. In order to create an enclosed yard space, we decided to add a fence with two gates. We have one at the main entrance and then one gate at the side courtyard entrance. Then we painted the fence pillars and caps to match the house and trim colors. Let's move on now to see how we accessorized the exterior of our mansion. In terms of decorating, we added a whole bunch of different types of details. At the front door, we cut a piece of burlap that already had a spooky pattern of a bat on it for our front door mat. Then we added some skulls above our doorways and on the rooftop windows. For our rooftop, we just added some pumpkin lights and a little character. Then to the right of the front door, we added a little swing set here and it has some bats on it so it looks kind of creepy. We added a bit of tree detail and then a bunch of different types of moss and some rocks in the pathway. We lit up the space in a number of areas with some Halloween inspired tea lights and then we created a graveyard off to the left side of our house. And here's our graveyard. We made some custom decorations. We made a bunch of little pumpkins and some gravestones. So let's show you how we did those. We're going to use our Crayola Magic Modeling Foam to create some super cool accessories in a variety of different colors to make some tombstones, some pumpkins, and a witch's cauldron. So let's get started. The fantastic thing about using this foam is that once it's dried, it is super light. Next, we're going to move on to make our witch's cauldron. First, we're going to do an all black pumpkin.
So all of our foam pieces have dried and now we're just gonna do a few finishing touches. Let's start with our black pumpkin. Since this pumpkin is black, it's harder to see some of the ridges. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of silver detail to really make some of the details pop. And there's our spookified accessories, all set up in our graveyard. We added a couple of candy gravestones and we just used a marker to write on them. We added our little skeleton. We have a little bendable tree here and that was just from the craft store. Again, we have a whole bunch of different types of mosses. We added a little creepy snake in the moss. Moving on to our courtyard space, we just added some of our own little trees and we hot glued them onto our grand courtyard staircase. We've created another outdoor sitting area here. We have a little set that we purchased at the craft store and so it's just made out of metal and it already has kind of spookified decorations. We've got a sparkly bat on there and it looks like a bit of a cobweb. And then a table to match. We've created two ghostly Playmobil characters. So let's show you what they look like to begin with. So we have two extra Playmobil characters that we're gonna use and we're gonna try and make them ghostly by spraying them white. So we're going to pop off her hat here. I think that's an old bride's veil. And we will pop off her hair. And we will spray those pieces individually. Once she's dry, we'll pop the hair back on along with her veil piece and she'll look ghostly. Same thing for him. This particular character used to have the words training across here. He was a workout character and so I took some nail polish remover and just rubbed those words off so we won't see a hint of that coming through when we sprayed him white but then left everything else so some of these different patterns and stuff that's okay to show through and we'll do the same thing with him. We're going to pop off his hair 
and we will spray that individually and then pop it back on. We're going to use acrylic white paint that's good for plastic and we'll see how this holds up. Let's get painting. And here's our trainer turned ghost and we have accessorized with a candlestick and a little ball and chain he can drag around to spook up the house. And there's our girl character and we just popped back on their hair and her hat accessory and then took some gray and silver paint to give a hint of their face. Next, let's move on to our last outdoor space. Here's the original upper patio that will transform into a witch's lair. And here it is. We painted the floor a flat black and then added a skull over top of the door. Let's move on and add in our accessories. Here's our witch's lair fully accessorized. And here is the custom cauldron that we showed you how to make out of our black foam clay. And we just added a little exploding potion accessory that came from one of our monster high sets. So we thought that that was a nice touch for our witch's cauldron. Next, we added some more Halloween inspired tea lights. So just sparkly black so we can light up the space a bit. We've added some other little details. So we got some baby pumpkins from the craft store. We have some cobwebs and a creepy little spider crawling around. We've added a bucket with just some twigs and then a whole bunch of different potions and accessories. And so some of these came from a Monster High set, some came from Little Woodsies, and some came from Calico Critters. So we just added different accessories that we already had in our house. And then lastly, we have the most important accessory for our witch, which is a custom made broom. Let's go in and show you how we did that. So let's move on to do another great little craft that you can put in your own haunted house. What does every witch need? I need a broom, an authentic looking witch's broom. <laughs> That's right. So let's make one. You're gonna need a few little sticks and you can find these from outside your house or in the park, anywhere, but they have to be pretty little. And if you're wanting it to go with a figure, then you have to make sure that you measure it so it's not too big. And I think this one will fit once we break this piece off like that. Yeah, I think that's the right size for her. And it can fit in her hand too, which is great. After we find our handle, we're going to need some itty bitty little sticks for the bristles of the broom. And I have some that I've already kind of broken up. I think some of them are still a little bit too long. So I'm going to put my pile here and I'm going to break these down and then we'll start to build it. So let's get started. So now that I have all the little sticks cut to size for the bristles of the broom, all we have to do is attach it. I have some double sided tape I'm going to use to stick to the small pieces so I can use twine to secure them. You can use twine, string, elastic or anything you have handy around the house. And there is the exterior of our haunted house. Let's move on inside to see how we customize each space. Starting on our main level, we're going to transform the original kitchen space into a living room. Here's our kitchen before, and here is the transformation. As you can see, the original floor was pretty discolored, so we painted it a fresh gray. We started each space by adding new wallpaper and curtains. So let's show you how we did this. So we have a, wall, a selection of wallpaper that we've already chosen and all that it is is just scrapbooking paper that you can get from most craft stores. Um, it's a little bit of a heavier cardstock, some are thinner, this one just is a little bit thicker. So to start the template process, we used tracing paper to start. It just made it easier to see where we needed to draw our lines 
and then from there we use the tracing paper template to put it onto cardstock. It's just a little bit more rigid for when we go to trace it onto the cardstock. So let's get started. So we're going to continue cutting out the remainder of our wallpaper and then we're going to show you what it looks like in each room. Next, let's move on to creating new curtains for each of our rooms. We've selected two different types of materials. So we have a cheesecloth that's doubled over, so we'll be using that a majority of the windows. We're going to try and keep it a little bit creepy with the cheesecloth. And then in the air, one of our areas we're going to use some glittery felt and so it's going to be very similar to the original ones which were just felt. We're just going to take the existing felt off of the curtain rod and we're going to use that as our template. So then next we just need to create the hole so it will actually be able to slip onto our curtain rod. I'm just going to use a really small screwdriver and poke it through the felt and I've placed the template back over top so we can see about approximately where we want to make the holes. Here's our curtains and wallpaper in our new living room space. Next, let's continue accessorizing to finish off the look. Now that our living room has been spookified, let's move on to show you how we transformed the original great room and sunroom space into a fantastic ballroom. Here's our great room and sunroom before, and here's the transformation. Again we painted the floor, and we chose to go with a light misting of black paint over white. We selected quite a strong patterned wallpaper on top, and a solid black below with silver chair rail to soften the upper pattern. Let's move our accessories into the space. There's our completed main level all spookified. Let's move on up to our second level. Here's the original bedroom and bathroom spaces. And here's the transformation. We decided to open up the space by removing the center wall and transform this level into an open kitchen and dining room space. We left the original floor intact and placed a full room size paper carpet in the kitchen to break up the open space between the two rooms. We chose cheesecloth curtains and fresh new wallpaper. Let's start accessorizing these spaces.
And there's our completed second level all spookified. Let's move on up to our top and final floor to check out our new master suite. Here's the original children's bedroom space and here's the transformation. We decided to cover the floor with a textured black cardstock and we have our bed in place as we added a custom skull light fixture and a lacy canopy. Before we start accessorizing the rest of this space, we'll show you how we transformed the original furniture and created a custom bed cover. So next, let's take a look at the furniture that we're going to be using for the master suite. This is the Playmobil Victorian bedroom set. And what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be taking out the mattress and the pillow parts for each part of the bed. We're going to be painting these black. And the paint that we're going to be using is an acrylic based spray paint that's made for plastic. And then with the side tables, you're going to take the drawers out. We're going to tape off the bottom and the sides because we only want to paint the front, which won't affect the slide of the drawer. So it will still be able to open and close. Otherwise, it might be a little bit sticky. And then for the dresser, we're going to do the same thing with this drawer. Take that out. And we're just going to paint the drawer front again, like the side tables. For the main part of the dresser, we're actually going to take the doors out. And then we're also going to be painting the interior. And here's our bedroom furniture all painted. And so as we said, we were only going to paint the front of the drawers. And that was so that they'd still be able to slide in and out. Also on the large dresser, we decided to keep the doors off so that we could put in some extra little accessories in there and we thought it would look quite nice. Next, let's put our bed together. Let's make a quilt to finish off our bed. I have some scrap fabric that we have, but I'm just gonna measure and make sure that it is the right size. I think we need to trim it a little bit more. So next what I'm going to do is just overlay our lacy fabric on top of the black just to give it a little bit of extra texture. And we're just going to fold the end pieces over to wrap it. And this is so that when we use our double sided fabric tape, you won't be able to see it through the lace on the, on the other side. Let's move our furniture into our space and finish accessorizing. And there's our master suite all spookified. We absolutely love how our spooky mansion turned out and we hope you love it too. If you have an idea for an original spooky story we can create using our mansion, please leave us your suggestions and we may feature your idea in a future video. Please leave us a comment and let us know which was your favorite space in our spookified mansion. And let us know if you can name any of the guests in our haunted house today. Thanks for watching. To join all the fun up in our treetop, please subscribe to Little Monkey Media's channel. Don't forget, if you like our video, please share it and click like. We go bananas for crafts!